So I am in Amsterdam at the moment. We are at the event Celebrating Descent, which is the coming together of all ex-Muslims. Literally the best event ever that I've ever been to. It's so exciting. So I will show you guys a little bit of the talks, um, but also we're gonna do a bit of sightseeing and hang out with cool people, obviously. So the first cool, awesome person <laughs> that I want to introduce you to is Faye. Hi. <laughs> so if you guys don't know already, she does have a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube? Uh, Faye the most gracious. Faye the most gracious. She is the most gracious and I think I've said on my Twitter she's the most gracious and the most wise. You've said that before. Yes. She I got so gassed for like she is. 48 hours. <laughs> okay well everything so. I say goes so yeah if I say it then, it's, always then right. it's the truth. Waleed knows she's always Exactly right. exactly. <laughs> so there is video vids around. He will be singing at this event so I'll make sure to film that as well. So we are in our hotel room at the moment in um, Amsterdam. By the way it's a bit messy so I'm not gonna show you around too much um but i really wanted to show you guys we got a goodie bag from um dibali is the the like place where we're having our festival it's not even an event it's a festival um and i thought it was so nice that we got a goodie bag and like i haven't got a goodie bag in ages so i'm really happy me likes goodie bags let me show you what i got so basically okay so this is the bag Touching the holy subject. Oh my goodness. Dibali Freedom Festival 2019 Amsterdam. This is like the most beautiful freedom festival ever. Honestly, it's amazing. Okay, so we get this little notebook with a pen. So cute. And then, and also they give us a bottle, which is so handy. Um, and then obviously there's actually this as well, which is, you know, what's happening. So it's one, two, three, four, like four days of fun. So three main days and then this day is just kind of like a talk about stuff. Um, I'm on this one. I am in No Longer Without You uh, discussion. So the 1st of September. That's me where I am. And then we'll lead somewhere up here doing his performance. I think it's blasphemy. Um, but yeah, so we're just so honored to be invited as well. Oh yeah, let me show you the rest of the bag. So, what else is in here? This is something about Diwali. They gave us like free food for being speakers, like every day that we went, free drinks, whatever. Oh, and then this, which I think is a, uh, hold on, it's hard to do one-handed. This is a chargey thingy. Yeah, it's a chargey thingy. Oh my gosh, see, Dabali chargey, your own little chargey thingy, which is so handy. And then, I'm not quite sure what this is. I think it's a coaster, but I love it. I'm gonna have it in my house for show. So, Festival of Freedom of Thought. So cute. Um, What else is in there? Some Dabali stuff, I don't know what that is. And, oh, this, look at this, see? There we go, got it to focus. So it says hashtag ex Muslims because, and it's a 2020 diary. So cute. And what else is in here? Uh, oh, and then a key ring as well. X, so Council of Ex Muslims of Britain key ring. And then at the back, celebrating descent. So you just bait yourself out to everyone just in case you want everyone to know when you're coming into your house with your keys. Is that it? Oh. I thought there was something else. So yeah, it's really, really nice. I am, um, I have like really enjoyed my time so far. I like, think it's just, as I said earlier, I think it just feels like a coming together of like family members. Like, I don't know, like you don't get that a lot, especially if you are someone that's so controversial, leaving a religion like Islam, you do kind of become this sort of like on the outskirts, obviously like myself, I've had lots of people cut me off. Um, and so to have a gathering like this of just like people accepting you is so important, first of all, and also ooh, is, and also is just, it just feels great. And I think this maybe should be something we do regularly, but also it's nice to get out of the country. Oh, look, he's opening up his, his water bottle. <laughs> I think he's just realized he's like, oh, we have a water bottle. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a good bottle. Okay. So he tested the bottle by smashing it on the wall. Yeah, we're in a hotel room, babe. We might break something. Okay, so we're gonna go have some breakfast and then go back to the Dibali. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you guys updated anyway with what's going on. We are really, really very impressed by the Dutch 
uh, Amsterdam mayor of Amsterdam, the mayor of Amsterdam, Tempe Halsman, who is not only opening this festival, which is a wonderful thing because um, for a lot of us here uh, today um, uh, gathered, it's not so normal that authorities are actually welcoming people who have the courage to think out loud and to think out in the way they want. Heretics, infidels, renegades, welcome to Amsterdam. <laughs> This country and, and this conference ha has set a model for us. Uh, you have set Netherlands, Amsterdam has set the bar high in terms of the fight for human rights, for progressiveness, for uh, secularism, and continue to do it, although you are very high. Uh, Just thinking about Rahaf's case earlier this year, that girl's life was saved because she made a noise in Thailand. You know, he came to Australia, he came to Canada, from multiple people, there was awareness, but what happened after it, when the media was covering it, nobody bothered mentioning, mentioning that she had left Islam. Everybody victimized her for being a Saudi woman, and nobody wanted to talk about being ex-Muslims. It was only early this year when, you know, all of us went like, but she's an ex-Muslim. Like, you're not, nobody wanted to touch that fact. But with social media, we find that we can create that noise. So for example, I'd ask questions like, how come my sister can't do this? And I'd be given a response, because she's a girl. And I'd be waiting for the rest of that sentence. <laughs> and then realised, oh my god, that's your visa. And it's like, just because she's a girl, and then you've put a full stop there. Um, and my brothers would be satiated by that uh, explanation. And then began using that as, a, as an explanation as well. So this sense of injustice, was what got me thinking more critically. So I think, you know, the definition of haram is technically what is forbidden, you can't have it, it's wrong. But it seems like the more practical definition of, of haram is anything that's fun. <laughs> anything that makes you human, <laughs> anything that you enjoy, is haram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really good, it's on the mic. Giving that a word every day and every night. Gonna break it down for all you people. Got logical proof that music is evil. Music is haram. Not least, you waited so long. I'm so sorry about no, that. I really enjoyed enjoyed listening to everyone. I feel like I can relate to every single tell person. Us, tell us about that. Way. You've heard all the I stories. Know. Who are you? Yeah, so I'm Marwa. Um, I have a YouTube channel, Mimsy Bids. Um, and yeah, I, I relate to the film, especially just the conflict that family feel with love and then their religion. It's such a huge conflict for people. Um, and I definitely felt that in my community. So I grew up kind of very religious. And it was religion <clears throat> over culture. So, you know, I know there's a lot of kind of cultural aspects and it's kind of how people view you as, as, as a culture. But for my family and community, it's more just what does the book say uh, about this scenario. So it has been um, sort of very difficult for my community and the family, obviously, because Islamically, you're supposed to kill apostates. So, um, so a lot of my family have kind of said, right, well, we'll kind of speak to you first and attempt to bring you back. Um, but I, you know, I've been told by my aunts and, and cousins and things that that they're really just doing it because it's their duty, and you know, for the sake of Allah, they're gonna try and have a conversation with me. Uh, but if, if it doesn't work, then they have to cut me off. So I did have a lot of people cut me off. Um, my mum, I think she kind of got a loophole, so she um, she figured out that I have magic on me. So uh, because of that, I, I just need an exorcism, so that's all the problem is. Um, and so in her mind, that's, that's kind of what she's currently in process of doing. Um, and she's kind of trying to heal me from this sort of mental issues that I'm having. Um, and that's the only reason really that I think she's kind of maintained contact with me. Otherwise, as I said, Islamically, she would have to cut me off. Um, but as I said, she's kind of managed to find a loophole. So everyone else on her side of the family have been like, no, we're just not going to talk to you. And how is the contact then? Is it always about this, this problem? Uh, is it always about uh, you 
uh, getting back to Islam, getting on their feet again, uh, getting back to the community? Is it always the conversations about that problem or are you talking about the daily life, about you as a person, about your work, the things you do? Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. No, I've had a few that have said, we would have accepted you, possibly, if you weren't talking about it. Um, and kind of, you know, out there in the open. And, um, because you, know, you are on YouTube, you are expressing yeah, yourself. Making, exactly. Uh, can you tell us something about yeah. it, the way you can bring it out? <laughs> yeah, so Your I, mean, ideas? My, I mean, my YouTube channel basically is just my own sort of platform where I just give my thoughts on things that are happening, social issues. I mean, my, my kind of, one of my first videos was why I left Islam, and that's like a 40 minute video. In fact, when people ask me, because I get that question a lot, it's like, okay, well, why did you leave? Let me answer these questions and I'll, I'll resolve everything. Um, why did you leave Islam? Well, and this is normally my response. I'm like, I, I really can't tell you in a few minutes. It's just, it, there's just, there's so many things, and it was such a process for me. It was over years. When did it start, that process? Well, um, how old were you? Because you're still very young, obviously. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> um, but no, it, it started, well, basically, I was very active in the Muslim community. So I was kind of on similar debates as these, but on the Muslim side um, at university. Um, so I would kind of have debates with people and kind of show how cuddly Islam actually is. Um, and you know, it is just about peace and it is a feminist religion. Um, what were your arguments then? <laughs> what were your arguments then? Well, I mean, I heard someone say it in one of these talks that Muhammad was the first feminist apparently. Uh, so, you know, he, he kind of resolved uh, many of the issues that women, women had there and he gave them their rights. And, you know, the hijab, you know, the covering is kind of a protection for you because we're so amazing that men can't possibly be looking at us. Um, so you studied it and you really believed all these things you were... Well, yeah. You were community. It's um, the thing. The thing is about the Muslim community, particularly the one I grew up in, is it's very suffocating. So you actually don't really see anything else anyway. So I always call it kind of a bubble where you're just kind of, you know, just. I mean, as soon as you're born, you have the Iran in your ear. You know, it's like as soon as you're born, you're a Muslim. There's all this Islamic stuff around you. There's, there's no choice. So it was never a thought, it was never like, oh, I think I'll be a Muslim. It you was just the legs, as Nazmi would exactly, say, exactly. to walk. Exactly, you have, you have absolutely no choice. So I was just like, uh, and then it becomes mixed with your identity a little bit as well. So I was very yeah, active and proud of this is who I've come from. I didn't even go to a normal school, I went to a Muslim school. Uh, so a private Muslim school, which, as I said, you know, they're all Muslims. We learned Islamic studies alongside maths and English and Quran. And, so it was, it was my life, and um, going to university was the first time I kind of really stepped out of that bubble. So that's kind of when I started to, as I said, what debate. What did you study there? Uh, geography. <laughs> so I was the only, in my university actually, I was the only hijabi in my course, uh, and it's quite a big uni as well. So I was kind of, you know, really, myself and my husband, we do this as well. Um, <laughs> We were kind of big advocates at the university for the Islamic Studies Association, so we were, you know, really kind of the faces for the Muslims. So I know. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I left, um, I think a lot of people were even more annoyed because they were like, "It looks worse." Because I was so religious and so kind of, you know, at the forefront of representing Islam. Even more intense. It's to just even out. more, exactly. So it's like, well, we can't even use the excuse that she doesn't know what she's talking about because she, she did. Studied it. Right, yeah. right. And she brought, and I brought a lot of people to Islam. I'm so sorry about that. But, <laughs> yeah, so, um, but it, it's fine. No, I'm dealing with it. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so I, you know, I kind of gave dawah, which is like bringing people to Islam. So for, for so many people, they just couldn't grasp it. So that's why I think a big reaction was also just to pull back. It's like, don't look, don't look at her, don't listen to her. I mean, I had so many people say like, I can't be your friend or I can't talk to you anymore because I don't want my kids to know about it. I don't, you know, it's just this fear of like, I don't want anyone to kind of listen to you. <laughs> near you to, to get influenced. Get influenced, yeah. I mean now I'm sort of a devil basically, so 
Um, and and I, essentially that's kind of what my mum's saying as well, that I've got a devil inside of me. Yeah, so. that's, that's why she has to uh, Ex practice exorcism mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. How is it for you to, to be seen that way by your mother, the one who gave birth to you? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's interesting. I didn't know how she would respond. I didn't really kind of think that far ahead, to be honest with you. It was just this feeling that everyone spoke about. You just want to kind of get it out. But um, I, I don't know. I think that's her way of coping. <laughs> and this kind of like delusion that she has. Um, I mean, in some ways, I kind of prefer it to at least she's not completely cutting me off. Uh, for a long time, I well, when I first kind of left, I really tried to accommodate everyone because I didn't want to lose everyone. My whole life, as I said, was this community. They were my life, the people as well, you know. And you realise how conditional their love was, uh, but for me, it wasn't, you know. So I really tried to um, accommodate them. I remember thinking, well, maybe I'll just wear hijab when I go see them. You know, or when I see their baby, I'll say, oh, mashallah, you know, like, oh, this, you have to say it to the baby, otherwise the baby will be evil eye if you don't say it that much. Yeah, say it to you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, um, and even when you're talking in the community I grew up in, if you don't say inshallah, like, if God wills, they're kind of like waiting for it. So it's like, oh, I'm going to go here and uh, uh, inshallah. Like, you have to. Compromise. You have, you have, exactly. So I kind of had this, like, maybe I should just do it. And then I was like, no, effort. Like, did you also feel the, feel the urge? I have to step. Yes, yeah, this? that's what it is. It's like I have to be true to myself. It's like they're not going to do that for me. They're not going to adjust their lives for me, are they? Realistically, um, and yeah, you have to just be true to yourself and and stand by what I believe in. You know, stand by my. If, even if they're not standing by me, I have to stand by me. Um, so that was really important. <laughs> This is for every dissenter, every free thinker, every single feminist who has been persecuted, killed, punished simply for free thinking. Now is the hour for the woman's voice Around the world for a woman's choice We will not rest until we all are free In our right to live with autonomy We will mourn, we will cry For all those who have died We will sing, we will dance This is our resistance We will learn, we will thrive We will fight to survive We were born for this chance This is our resistance Governments and family ties We will not fail We hold our mother's plans To be heard In all of our demands We will mourn We will cry for all those Who have died We will sing We will dance of Amsterdam with the ex-Muslims. We got Harris. Harris, say hi. Hi. To the vlog. No, Armin, yeah. say hi. Hey. <laughs> Zara K. And there is the husband, Vidu Vids. Where are we going, Vidu Vids? Rookies. Look at that, rookies. V rookies. So this is, we're just going to have a casual coffee and it's um, just, just, just an innocent coffee. Just an innocent coffee and maybe a snack or two. Very innocent. So we're going to go in here and enjoy ourselves. If anyone asks, she's not Marwa. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. If, if anyone asks, my boss is watching, I'm not Marwa. Hi. Welcome. Oh my God. I can't do this. Now. So basically, in between all of the 
speeches and events we are just kind of hanging out as well and trying to spend some quality time together and I've just done my speech so um, so yeah basically now we're kind of hanging out with the gang and then we will be popping back for Horace's uh, speech as well oh not speech what is it it's a talky panel. thing panel that's it that's the word yeah so basically this is my <laughs> my <Hi>. assistant <laughs> whenever I need words whenever you need words she's I'm there yes exactly I have really bad time remembering words oh okay we're going into the shop now okay. guys this goes with the theme of uh, uh, glass for the forbidden yeah. yes. 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 this goes with the theme of our conference <laughs> We're at a conference, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he just asked. These, yeah. these yeah. gave the speeches. About? It's anti religious. Anti religious. Anti -religious. So oh, that's listen. why it says celebrating the sin. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Celebrating the sin, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> these forbidden fruit yeah. goes very well, goes with, very well, well with the, with the theme yeah. of tonight. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, let's get Am this. Am I just supposing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, 15 grams, 1750, and 15 grams is like a normal dose for one person. So, I'm still with the ex Muslim gang, and we are having some food. I will show you what a Dutch pancake looks like. It's with cherries and ice cream and cream and stuff. I'm just about to have that. Uh, and I'll show you the gang and what we're doing. In America. Marwa, Hello? you are literally shading us right now. We're all hungover. Free speech and sexual This is a Dutch pancake. Like, um, the right to be the more sexual in the world, they are more pro free speech and they are more um, anti religion, or like, let's say, less friendly towards religion in general. It's the left of so many So we've left the uh, restaurant, and yeah, I'm just with. If you guys don't know, by the way, this is Rana, Hi. who is absolutely amazing. <laughs> she basically escaped Saudi Arabia, and her whole video and story is like done by Vice News and it's on YouTube right now so I will link it down below so you can check out her story um, and like a lot of ex-Muslims are going through this kind of traumatic experience of running away from their families not having anywhere to go and then kind of fighting to get um, you know kind of status somewhere else uh, it's a very difficult process and now she actually helps people that go through that same process um, so definitely check her out and support her Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. In my organization, if someone wants to support us and or donate us, it's possible, yeah. Okay, so what's your organization called? Uh, Atheist uh, Refugee Relief. Okay, um, Atheist Refugee Relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So make sure you guys support her. So what do you think of Amsterdam? Oh, Amsterdam is beautiful. Honestly, it's such a neat, pretty, just well organized city. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, this is a city where you can get high and drunk in yeah. all sorts of ways. Yeah. Right? Yet, you will not see any sort of misbehavior, misbehavior hooli hooliganism, Hooligan, yeah. nothing. Nothing. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful and the people are so nice Amazing. as well. Like, Amazing. They have a different kind of vibe to them, I feel like. It's just so chill and just like, yeah. like relaxed. And you feel at home, like they, they don't make you feel no. like you don't, like what are you doing here kind of thing. They're just very like genuinely nice people here. Almost naive. Innocent, yeah, innocent, like innocent, innocent. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's actually true. Um, but yeah, I love it, and it's funny because I have one of my closest friends from uni, um, Charlotte. Hi, she is Dutch and she is from here, and I think she is all those things, but it's weird like, like she was always very kind of pure, you know. I used to always describe her as a pure person because she didn't judge people like that, she took everything kind of. I don't know, like she's just a sweet personality, like a loving personality. And it's weird, like I come to her country and like everyone's like this here. I'm like, mm. oh okay, this is actually just maybe like a Dutch kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny. But yeah, we're loving it and we're gonna go on a boat tour. Um, but yeah, and also I love how like they obviously got these trams that take you everywhere, like they're trying to save um, the, the world basically and kind of more people are riding bikes, bikes everywhere. It's kind of annoying for the pedestrian though because literally, oh, it's kind of annoying for the pedestrian though because it's like literally you can't walk, like you have to watch out for these little bikes all the time. It's like I always feel like I'm going to get hit. Oh and our boat has arrived.
guys, we've come to the end of our trip in Amsterdam. We're just getting ready to go. We're in the hotel room and um, yeah, I'm like really, really tired, but um, I've had so much fun. Honestly, it's been like such an amazing kind of like whirlwind. I feel like it's just been a few days, so it's been like so much in a few days has happened. Uh, we, we really enjoyed it though. How do you feel about it, Willie? It's amazing. Yeah, so that's kind of how we feel. We're just so tired. <laughs> we need to leave in like, I don't know, half an hour or something to get to the airport. And then we're actually flying to Berlin and then we're going home. So we've got a lot to do. Just my overall thoughts. I feel like um, things like this are so important, as I said earlier, you know, for us to come together and um, to have like these events where we, it feels like a re, re boosting or revitalizing, I don't know, I'm really tired, I don't know what the word is, but it kind of makes you just feel better because what we go through is so much rubbish, like as ex-Muslims and we get so much hate and we're just called like racist and you know, you're always made to feel bad by people, not even just Muslims make you feel bad, you know, other people make you feel bad, like, oh, you're a bit controversial, you're being rude to Muslims, and it's like, we, we don't want to be those people, we're just speaking about issues that are happening, like human rights issues are happening all across the world because of a, an ideology that is Islam, and, you know, it's not fair that I can kind of just decide I'm not Muslim when so many other people can't just not be Muslim and can't just live their lives and live however they want to live obviously you know just they just want to be good people but they don't want to be muslim anyway i don't know if i'm making sense because i'm half asleep we actually got to hang out a lot with ex-muslims that are online like armin Navabi, um you know sarah Haider, muhammad saeed um ali Hara Harris. sultan ali rizvi um so many that we you know haven't really had a chance to properly hang out with so that's also been really special and like really fun just to have like some quality time with those people as well i think is really nice and loads of others by the way and i met a lot of you guys as well people that watch my videos so hi it was really cool meeting a bunch of people that watch my videos um and yeah do you have a highlight i think meeting all the people uh, that you speak to on youtube that i've interviewed that have, that have interviewed me yeah it's just you know all our communication was on like sort of internet we're now meeting mm -hmm. them in person mm -hmm. hanging out with them just being normal just like uh having normal conversation it wasn't even always about islam or whatever yeah. just chilling out having a good time i feel like we met people that were just open-minded relaxed mm -hmm. Uh, the organizers, the Dibali, they were amazing. amazing. They went all out to make sure that we were comfortable, that we had what we wanted. Yeah. Um, they made us feel special, like honored. Mm -hmm. And we were honored to be there, to be honest with you. So mm -hmm. I think Amsterdam itself, the city, the people of Holland, they're very uh, welcoming, very mm -hmm. good hosts, very chill. And the whole experience was amazing, honestly. It really was. And actually coming back to the Dibali, so I've mentioned it before, the director of the Dibali was such an amazing guy. Like he just, I feel like there was a lot of kickback, is that the right word? Yeah. For um, for basically this event, for the hosting ex-Muslims in this way and celebrating dissent. It shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any kickback, there shouldn't be any problems with this because there's no issue, like it's not fair for there to be a problem with it, but then people do have a problem with it. Um, and he was kind of just like, there. I don't see an issue with this. It, we're not against religion, uh, you know, as an organization, you know, Dubali. Um, this is, we're, we're just going to support everyone, though. You know, we're going to support all kinds of people from all walks of life. And I mean, he even paid, I don't think personally himself, but the organization paid a lot of money actually for people to come from all over the world um you know you saw like even the goodie bag like they put a lot of money into this and i think there were a couple of people that had they had such high security measures that it was like fifty thousand euros each that had to be paid for them and they had to sign this kind of contract because it was such a high risk 
um, you know, there were such high risk people that were coming because obviously ex-Muslims, they have death threats, they have security. It wasn't easy to have this festival, this event. Um, and I'm just like so grateful to Dabali, so grateful to that amazing guy that, you know, really kind of signed off so many difficult decisions I'm sure he had to make. And um, and just grateful to Mariam Namazi, who was, you know, one of the main people that organized this. I mean, she is, I've called her this before. She's like the queen of ex-Muslims. I think she prefers to be called the mother of ex-Muslims. Um, but she's, yeah, she's amazing. Um, if anyone doesn't know who she is, then you're crazy, first of all, no, I'm kidding, but um, if you don't know who she is, uh, she basically started the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain um, and was one, you know, many ex-Muslims mentioned that she was kind of the first one that they saw, other than like Ayan Hirsi Ali, I think, but she was definitely kind of one of the first people that we saw in Britain, you know, that were not Muslim, then an ex-Muslim, someone that left Islam, an apostate that was speaking publicly and helping other apostates. So as I said, she's kind of like the OG uh, and she's amazing and she was the one that kind of set this all up for us and invited us. So thank you to her and and, and to, to everyone involved. Um, but yeah, I think I would agree with my highlight was probably just the meeting and the coming together of us all. That was so nice. And just, you know, the discussions were really interesting and engaging and thought Provoking, but also just the kind of chilling out time I think for me was probably the best like just chilling out with everyone and having kind of like side debates as well like personal debates but then also just not talking about just talking about like random normal stuff I'm hopeful that there will be change there will be a dominoes effect there will be eventually with all these voices speaking out and saying look I'm an apostate this is what I believe Islam can be detrimental in these ways because they don't give freedom to certain people in these ways um, and I'm speaking out we're all speaking out against this and I think eventually I'm hoping the more that come out the more that we speak about it the more that we host events like this this event you know it was actually all over Holland it was advertised all over Holland I feel like that would be very difficult to happen in London like I don't know if that would happen in England if they would advertise an ex-Muslim event about leaving religion. Like, that's quite a big deal, which it shouldn't be because it's kind of stupid. Like, so what? People can convert and that can be everywhere. People can talk about Islamic relief on all the buses and have hamdallah and bismillah, but we can't talk about leaving a religion. Like, that doesn't really make sense. So I do think people are starting to see um, and eventually will kind of make changes in in how things are and how people view ex-Muslims and realize that it's just not like so controversial and it's just people having an opinion like it's not that big of a deal um but yeah so anyway I'm really hopeful for the future and I've really enjoyed my time here and I hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog make sure to like this video subscribe to my channel I've got so much more coming and I'll see you guys soon stay in touch Mwah.